So it has been a very uh, um, uh, interesting experience for me uh, to discover um, SGRT from a very different perspective. I know most people here are probably from the clinical perspective that they found the SGRT, found it very useful. But for me, I really just you know find, found out that uh, well, when I uh, uh, did the optimization treatment planning, when I actually really have to make things happen in reality, I'm missing an important piece, which is what I'm going to talk about today. switch. So uh, there's a little bit of uh, disclosure um, um, supported by VNRT and uh, I also am a founder of a small medical device company and I'm uh, currently uh, uh, supported by a number of NIH and uh, Department of Energy grants. So um, this is a, um, what we have been doing uh, extensively in the past seven years. Uh, which is uh, inverse optimization, uh, extensively using non-coplanar angles uh, to create uh, the uh, best possible dose, uh, dose distribution for some of the complex and the challenging cases. Um, so as you can uh, see here, using the CRM gantry system, uh, we uh, uh, instead of using the uh, uh, existing uh, conventional uh, coplanar beams, we use many non-coplanar beams to treat the tumor. So we've published uh, close to 30 papers on this topic, and this is a highlight. For example, for the lung cancer patients, uh, we showed that we can uh, double the dose compactness, or in other words, we can reduce the R50 by about 50%, uh, which allows us to uh, escalate the tumor dose by 40% without increasing surrounding normal tissue dose. Uh, for head and neck cancer patients, we showed that we can uh, increase uh, uh, local control for the retreatment of uh, head and neck cancer patients. We can increase the, the local control from 40% uh, to 80% uh, with the, the kind of uh, safe dose escalation. And we also showed a significant improved uh, normal organ sparing for the liver, uh, pancreas, uh, uh, prostate, uh, brain, and the spine patients. You know, for instance, for the liver SVRT patient, uh, we showed that uh, we can, uh, without compromising the target coverage, we can reduce the amount of normal liver, tu tu uh, normal liver tissue receiving uh, 15 gray or higher by uh, another 51 uh, cubic centimeters. Um, so in this slide, I want to show you some uh, of the visual comparison between what we can achieve with uh, the best uh, non copan IMRT plan and uh, compare with uh, the state-of-the-art VMAT plan. For, for example, for the lung patient, uh, this patient had a, a, a tumor that's very close to the heart and the bl major blood vessels. Uh, with the uh, uh, VMAT plan, uh, we can create a conformal dose distribution, but there is still substantial dose spillage to the uh, blood vessel, major blood vessels. Uh, by uh, using the 4-pi non-coplanar IMRT, we can make the dose distribution much more compact and then spare the major blood vessel, uh, which allows us to uh, deliver a higher dose to the patient. Uh, and uh, uh, this is a, a brain patient, a, a retreatment a GVM patient. So the patient had already received a close to 60 gray to roughly the same region. Now the tumor has recurred. We have to deliver another 25 gray in the five fractions to the same volume. Uh, because the uh, target is so close to the brain stem, uh, it becomes dangerous. Um, uh, given the amount of uh, high dose spillage to the brain stem. And uh, with 4pi, we can create uh, this razor sharp dose gradient uh, between the uh, tumor and uh, the uh, brain stem, which allows us to treat the, actually treat the patient, uh, which I will talk about a little bit uh, using CRM system. Um, the distance between 100% uh, uh, isodose to 50% isodose in this case is 2.9 millimeters. Um, and uh, uh, I'm not sure uh, if uh, some of you were in the uh, presidential session this afternoon. There was an update uh, in the spine SBRT, RTOG protocol. Uh, so one of the criteria uh, for patients to qualify for the uh, very effective uh, spine SRS treatment is to uh, uh, make sure that the uh, 
the volume of spinal cord receiving more than 10 gray is less than 10 percent, but how about zero percent here? Um, similarly, you can see the uh, remarkable. Oh, hold on. Uh, those uh, uh, compactness improvement uh, by moving from the uh, VMAT uh, coplanar VMAT uh, platform to the non coplanar four pi treatment. And even uh, for very challenging cases such as uh, uh, bone marrow sparing radiation therapy for pelvis treatment. Uh, and here the target is sandwiched between the small bowel and the bone marrow. And in the coplanar uh, distribution, uh, coplanar co plants, in order to move the dose away from the active bone marrow, you have to increase the dose to the uh, small bowel. But with non coplanar, we can achieve dose improvement uh, for both OARs. So the question is why aren't we already using 4 pi extensively in the clinic? So the movie here shows um, the answer. This is uh, uh, the uh, uh, time-lapse movie I recorded uh, uh, for our uh, four-pi clinical trial of treating this uh, uh, recurrent uh, GBM patient. Uh, this is the exact treatment plan you saw previously. Um, there, are, uh, there were 20 couch kicks, and in order to avoid uh, the uh, collision between the couch and the gantry, uh, the therapist uh, enter the room 20 times to manually move it. And the total treatment time is 55 minutes. So this is uh, the reason that although this is uh, what we want, and because the difficulty, the treacherous path to get there, <laughs> most people will say, well, better safe be than sorry, right? This, because safety, is uh, the bottom line is the most important thing in our field. We don't want to just to achieve a dose, uh, dose improvement uh, while risky the patient, risk the patient uh, because of the collision. Um, <laughs> is it really so difficult to deliver 4Pi? It's like uh, driving a car. Is it so difficult to drive from point A to point B? It is difficult only because you cannot see, right? When you cannot see, you know, if you cannot see, you're gonna have a collision. So this is where I find the surface guided uh, uh, imaging method be so useful for my uh, uh, research and for going forward with 4Pi delivery. Uh, we installed uh, two pairs of uh, wall-mounted uh, 3D uh, cameras in the city simulation room. Uh, both cameras are equipped with uh, wide-angle lenses uh, for over two meters of field of view. Um, and uh, they also have the low-pass filters to uh, uh, reduce sensitivity room lighting. Uh, the surface accuracy, um, we verify the surface accuracy by placing a phantom of known geometry across the field of view, and we verify that the surface uh, image error is uh, under uh, two millimeters across the field of view. Uh, and um, we, for the patient, uh, we acquire the surface image immediately before or after we uh, perform the CT scan. So there is a very minimal uh, 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 motion between the two. Uh, image uh, between the optical imaging and uh, the uh, CT imaging. So this is the result. Uh, as you can see, uh, the uh, middle chunk of the patient, uh, this is the surface rendering from the CT. It, uh, it only has a uh, part of the pa patient surface information. And then uh, with uh, the 3D camera, we can capture the entire patient surface. Um, because the two images are acquired at the same time, uh, we can register them with very high uh, accuracy. So this is what we did to uh, uh, calculate the collision-free surface. Uh, we exhaustively searched the combination of the couch and the gantry angles, so we can map it out uh, at which angle, at which distance uh, the beam is safe. So you can see for different uh, 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 disease sites, for example, for cranial patients, for uh, abdominal patient, and for pelvic patient, uh, there are uh, there are different collision maps. 
Um, this map shows you the gantry angle and the couch angle. And uh, the blue dots are the ones that are safe to deliver uh, with uh, 100 SAD. And uh, the uh, black dots are the ones uh, can be delivered uh, with extended source, source to tumor distances. Um, and uh, there are two other types of dots. Uh, the uh, green cross and the pink cross are the uh, beam angles that are wrongly uh, predicted by the CT image alone. So if you only rely on the CT image, you are going to overestimate the beam angles that are safe, but they are actually uh, 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 leading to collision uh, if you have the uh, complete surface. And the red ones are uh, the undeliverable uh, beams. So with this uh, tool, we can uh, study uh, for patients in different postures and then tumors at different uh, sites uh, and then quantify the uh, delivery angles. For example, we have arms down, uh, arms down, arms on chest. Uh, next one, we have arms up. And then we have uh, head, lung, uh, abdomen, and the pelvis sides. So, um, this one uh, shows you some of the uh, quantitative results. So I forgot to mention that uh, in order to do a four pi, we start with uh, uh, 1162 uh, equally distributed non-coplanar angles. And with this tool, we can calculate uh, how many of these angles are still available uh, for treatment planning. So for example, for this case, uh, if it's a, a cranial case, we have uh, 754 beams available with uh, 100 SAD. Uh, however, uh, if we move down the body uh, from uh, head to lung to abdomen to pelvis, we have a reducing number of available beams. Um, and uh, uh, for a patient in a different uh, posture, for example, uh, the patient with arms up, uh, we have reducing number of beams accordingly for these uh, different sites. Another thing here is uh, uh, information I just talked about. Uh, we could uh, uh, rely on, for example, the CT alone or the complete surface image to predict the collision. Um, there is a big difference, for example, for the prostate patient. If we uh, rely on the CT alone, we would uh, um, uh, uh, have thought that we have uh, 511 beams available, but uh, uh, in reality, we only have 373 beams available for safe planning. So what we can do, once we have the collision surface mapped out, we can create this so-called cocoon in our program. This cocoon describes that uh, where you can send the beam in to treat certain tumor. And once you have the cocoon surface, you can um, navigate on this surface. So for example, if there are 20 non-coplanar beams, how do you connect all these beams together? Uh, we develop the algorithms to calculate an uh, optimal trajectory. We can optimize based on the total navigation or total travel time. We can optimize based on uh, minimization of the couch travel or the gantry travel or any particular parameter. So this is what I would imagine, envision, uh, for the future of uh, uh, SG-guided 4-pi uh, uh, treatment. So we start with the beam collision modeling that takes about one minute. Currently, we have a distributed GPU dose calculation engine that can calculate the beam light dose of all the beams in three to five minutes, depending on the size of the tumor. And then we prepare the dose matrix for uh, calculation. And then we can perform the beam orientation and the fluence map optimization in four to six minutes. And then we can arrive at the beautiful dose distributions that you saw on the first couple of slides. And then we, we will take about two minutes to calculate the uh, trajectory. And this is where we are once we have all these things figured out. Once we have the collision uh, all mapped out, we created the treatment plan. The plan can be delivered automatically. So the 55 minutes treatment uh, can be delivered in eight minutes. So now 
we don't have to worry about how difficult to drive from one location to another location because we can see. So hopefully this is something that's gonna be widely available with uh, you know, SGRT. So I have a summary here. Um, radiation dosimetry can be significantly improved as I demonstrated. Um, currently, it's the fear for collision prevented us from uh, effectively taking advantage of this freedom and the better dosimetry. And the reason we fear for the uh, collision is because we cannot see very well. We, we don't have a quantitative, we did not have a quantitative image modality to map out the uh, delivery space. And now we have it and we can use it. And we demonstrated that there is a, a workflow that we can um, create a, a safe, deliverable, and efficient treatment plan uh, with the four pi dosimetry in uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and uh, currently, I think a, a project that we are working on is we are uh, putting uh, in two pairs of uh, uh, cameras in the treatment room so we can verify the collision space. In addition to the uh, surface image we acquired in the, trim, uh, in, the plan, uh, in the city simulation room. So that's my presentation. Thank you for your attention.